From the most trusted names in local news, KDPG Sunday Edition. Good morning and welcome to the KDPG Sunday Edition. I'm Stacy Smith. Every week on Wall Street has its ups and downs, but this past week was especially volatile. It began on Monday as stocks suffered their worst day of the year. At one point, the Dow Jones Industrial Average had fallen more than 950 points. It was spurred by President Trump announcing that plans for new tariffs on $300 billion in Chinese imports. And that was then followed by China allowing its currency to drop to its lowest point in more than a decade. So where does the trade war between the United States and China stand now? And what is the overall state of the economy as we head toward the 2020 presidential election? Well, this morning we have two experts to help sort through this. Erica Owen is an associate professor in the Graduate School of Public and International Affairs at the University of Pittsburgh, focusing on the political process of trade and foreign investment. And Robert Miller is a professor of economics and strategy at Carnegie Mellon University with a focus on wages and labor. We're also joined by Joe Smito, the editorial writer for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I want to thank both of you for being with us this morning on the KDPG Sunday edition. So, Erica, let me start with you. Where do things stand right now? Well, it's sort of, as you said, a lot of things are up in the air. Uh, a couple of big things happened this week. Um, for U.S. consumers, the biggest thing is the announcement of 300, uh, a 10 percent tariff on an additional $300 billion of goods imported from China. And that actually includes a lot of goods that consumers, U.S. consumers buy directly. So as you're thinking about um, shopping for school supplies and back to school stuff. Well, how does it how does it affect the, the U.S. consumer? Because you know, for most of us, it just seems like you know this number here, this number there. What does it really mean to to us? So a tariff is a tax, and so U.S. consumers are going to be paying a higher price for a lot of goods that um, previously were not affected by the trade war. So things like shoes, things like clothing, um, computers, and iPhones are now potentially subject to new tariffs going into place September first. Would, it, would we see if that's a 10 percent increase on 300 million dollar, 300 billion dollars worth of, of goods from China, uh, that we would see a 10 percent increase in the items that we buy? Does it translate but, directly mean, like that? Potentially, for a lot of items, it does sort of lead to almost a 10 percent increase, but it varies from you know good to good how much you know the increase is passed so on. We, to so when you do your holiday shopping this year, is that when you're going to notice some spikes in the right. prices it, of items you buy? Yeah, prices of items that you buy, and it, it's also hurting U.S producers who sell those items. So people who sell toys, for instance, right, they're facing that additional cost on the goods that they import and then sell to the rest of us. Robert, the, the president, when he first came into office, stated that he wanted to bring more jobs back to this country. Have these tariffs helped at all in bringing jobs back to this country? No, I don't think so. I think um, the deregulations that he introduced uh, earlier in his regime have, have done that. But I think the main thing the changing announcements have done have created uncertainty in the business world. Now, there are some firms that would bring, that would uh, increase their employment. For example, when he uh, increased the uh, steel tariffs, mm -hmm. there was some increase, not much, in employment in steel firms. On the other hand, even steel mill firms did not experience much of an increase. Because after all, they're not just buying steel from American manufacturers, they would have been buying them from Chinese uh, steel producers as well. So I think overall, the uh, change in tariff policy, or the continuing change in tariff policies, creates uncertainty about how to invest, rather than affecting the employment that much. Has it hurt the employment at all? I think it's a little too early to say that. I know that um, there are forecasts that uh, employment might go down as a result of this, but tariffs um, have an ambiguous effect on uh, employment. For example, the um, items that you were referring to are now going to probably be built, bought from other places, and some of those will be man American manufacturers as opposed to Chinese manufacturers. So those firms will be, um, will be favorably affected but then um, the effect on the consumer, of course, will be negative. Are, are there Could some I... investments not being made because of this uncertainty? I would say yes, but it's hard to tell because when there's uncertainty in the economy, until you get a retrospective, it's a little bit difficult to see how the replanning is being done. We don't know whether these September tariffs will actually be implemented. And suppose, he, can, suppose the, he changes his mind tomorrow and people believe that, that, that these tariffs won't be implemented, then I would say the impact on the 30% threat now is probably minimal. 
this past week also, as we mentioned in the, in the lead-in, is that the, the Chinese apparently have now, uh, or accused at least by this country, of manipulating the currency. How does that affect all of this? So it's a, that's a really great question. Um, and there's actually some, you know, debate about like whether China is actually uh, manipulating the currency. But basically, when you have a weaker currency, when the Chinese currency is weaker, that makes their goods more competitive and it makes it cheaper for us as consumers to buy them. Um, and so the concern from the administration and, is that by allowing their currency to become less valuable and making the dollar stronger, that's going to hurt American you know, producers who are trying to compete with Otherwise China. Otherwise, the American product is going to be more expensive than the Chinese product. Exactly. Which it already is. Right. Correct? So it's cheaper for us to buy from China, and it's harder for China to buy from us. All right, can, so, can I just jump yeah. in there to follow on with what you've said? When the yuan goes down, it's cheaper for China to export to other countries. And in fact, in the Wall Street Journal on Friday, um, they, um, sh they showed figures that suggested that China was now exporting more to, a, to Southeast Asia and also China, so, and, and also Europe. So part of the response of China not being able to sell to America is that they sell somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And depreciating their currency helps them do that. But at the lower price, are, they, is, 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 are the Chinese businesses and the, the country making as much money as it would have at a higher price for the yuan? I would say no. The basic point is that when you stand in, in the middle of a trade and take something out, both the producer and the consumer are hurt. So American consumers are hurt when they can't buy their school right. supplies as, as cheap as they used to. And also Chinese suppliers, the producers are hurt because they're not getting as much. Uh, but how easy is it for, the, the, for China just to find other markets for these goods they're ordinarily shipping to the U.S.? They are an autarky, and so as, a, as a, they are autocratic, and so um, to the extent that it's centrally planned, I think it is a very difficult problem to solve. And so depreciating their country, their currency is a very heavy-handed way of making their goods more competitive outside, and then they'll just let the market see where it takes them. Erica, we've talked about China. When, when the, Mr. Trump came into office, one of the first trade wars, if we can call it that, or disputes, was with Europe. Uh, where do they, things stand now? So I think in general, the things are very uncertain, right? Because we've seen not just with Europe, but with Mexico, with Canada, this sort of tendency by the administration to announce tariffs and then pull them back and then announce them again. And so um, my sense of where things stands with Europe is um, that it's sort of in stasis, but we don't know what's going to happen. And that uncertainty, not just surrounding trade policy vis-a-vis -vis China, but just trade policy in general, is sort of what's suppressing uh, investments by U.S. businesses and, you know, firms who don't know like where, uh, what to expect in the future as far as prices. And as as Britain leaves the European Union, what is that effect going to have on trade with the United States? So, I mean, from the perspective of Britain, right, they really would like to have a trade agreement with the United States um, in order to mitigate some of the costs that they're going to experience as a result of Brexit. Um, and so I think it puts the U.S. in a favorable position as far as negotiating with Britain, they need that. Well, uh, Trump and Boris Johnson seem to get along. Will that help smooth the way toward the kind of agreement you're talking about? Uh, I mean, potentially, but I think we've sort of seen that um, despite, like, what is, despite personal relationships between President Trump and other leaders, it, it's not necessarily leading to uh, the completion of trade deals or other types of agreements. You have to expect that other countries, including China or Europe or who, Mexico, Canada, whoever it might be, are already looking ahead, as we are, to the 2020 presidential election. Is it possible that the Chinese are just sitting back and waiting to see how this goes uh, as far as who's going to be the next president? I, I, I mean, I personally think that that's possible. I mean, are, are they playing the game a little bit more like this, saying, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll withstand these tariffs for a while until we see who's the next president? I think that's part, certainly part of their calculation, right? And they can be a little bit strategic in terms of how they... Uh, respond to, you know, policies coming out of the United States. You know, one of the 
most prominent examples of their retaliation has been soybean farmers. And so there's a lot of discussion about whether uh, U.S. farmers are going to continue to support the president at the level that they did um, in the 2016 election. It, um, if we're thinking about comparing China with the U.S. that way, the um, electorate plays a much bigger role in the U.S. than it does in China. Mm -hmm. And so in some sense, they can play a strategic game more easily than the U.S. can because ultimately there is the 2020 they're, they're election. Not they're not changing leadership like we might. Absolutely not. And right. that allows them to manage things more in, in, in a more strategic way. Now, overall, though, the Chinese population is aging more, and, and so that is also going to play, play a role in the future too. Not in 2020, but over the next 20 years or so. Mm -hmm. And um, that can, that, that is something they're going to have to worry yeah. about. I just, can I yeah. add one sure. thing on this, right? So um, the Chinese, from the perspective of the Chinese government, they care a lot about growth. You know, they're facing these concerns like an aging population and also sort of drastically slower growth um, than they did five years ago. And so, you know, they're, they want to maintain a certain level of growth so that they can maintain a level of sort of satisfaction, even though they're not elected, right? They need to sort of keep, uh, keep their citizens you know, well, content. We have about a minute or so left, uh, so I'll ask, ask both of you, from your perspective, from, from international trade and this sort of thing, will it affect the 2020 election? Um, I think it could, um, in the sense that we don't know what's going to happen to the economy overall. We could start to see signs of the U.S. economy slowing, and if that's the case, um, it could certainly uh, affect the outcome of the election. Do you think the U U.S. economy will slow because of the tariffs? I don't think that it will directly slow as a result of the tariffs. I mean, trade is sort of a small part of the overall U.S. economy. But if businesses continue to be uncertain and not hire new workers and invest, um, that can dampen overall growth. Robert, from your perspective, uh, focusing on wages and labor, uh, where do you think it stands as far as the worker goes going into the 2020 election? I don't think there's going to be very much change in employment over the, over the next year. There might be some dampening. And I think that would have political ramifications. I think the bigger effects that Erica has already mentioned are going to be in the uncertainty that uh, businesses face as they're thinking about investment and possibly how much they're willing to support their uh, right. candidate. All right. Erica, Robert, thank you so much for being with us this morning on the KDPG Sunday edition. When we return to the KDPG Sunday edition, we will discuss a proposed tax increase that will be on the ballot for thousands of voters and how that money will be used. We'll be talking with the head of the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy. It's coming up.